Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Thursday morning, November 16th, found me on an airplane bound for Vienna, Austria. I had been invited to the private launch event for the new flagship Callista Mantax DAC to be held at the Adagio Vienna City Hotel on Saturday, November 18th. The Adagio Vienna City sits just south of the Don Canal, an arm of the nearby Danube River, I hope I pronounced that right, and just immediately west of the Weintal Canal, which flows into it, bordering Vienna's city center. This places it just inside what is known as the Ring, the popular name given to a series of wide tree-lined boulevards that encircle nearly the entire center of the city. The Ring is about six and a half kilometers long, or roughly four miles long, and arguably offers more historical sites lining its edges than virtually any other road in the world. This map snapshot shows the Ring, uh, the central hub in the city of music, and the red star indicates the location of the Adagio Vienna City Hotel, where the event took place. Interestingly, the city of Vienna was the home, or adopted home, of many of the most illustrious composers of the classical music era during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. From roughly 1780 to 1828, the year of Schubert's death, the city's litany of distinguished composers raised music to a force that transcended all geographic borders and generations. The fact that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Joseph Haydn, Franz Schubert, Joseph Lanier, Johann Strauss, Anton Bruckner, and Gustav Mahler were Austrians, and that Ludwig von Beethoven, Johannes Brahms and Christoph Willibald Gluck put down spiritual and musical roots in Vienna merely solidifies the extent to which Austria may be regarded as a true birthplace to music, giving rise to what has become known as Viennese classicalism. Not so surprisingly, this litany of highly esteemed musical personalities was drawn to the capital of the great Austrian Empire to take advantage of the overt patronage offered by the ruling monarchy, the House of Habsburg, as well as that of the other aristocrats of its imperial court. The Habsburg dynasty takes its name from Habsburg Castle, a fortress built in the 1020s in present-day Switzerland. As one of the most prominent and important dynasties in European history, the house was celebrated for having fostered a lucrative and fertile environment for artists and musicians. Why so much background on this extraordinary and musically rich city? Given its role as the source of some of the most memorable and influential works of music ever created, could there be a more appropriate or better suited city from which to launch such an ambitious musical playback machine, the Callista Mantax? Metronome Technology was born in 1987 in the south of France and the company name is derivative of founder Dominique Geiner's first bookshelf loudspeaker, a product that he began developing in 1984, the 15 and 3 quarter inch tall MT1, which was shaped rather like a metronome. Callista is a brand first introduced under the French metronome technology banner in 2002, and this new flagship 59,000 euro, or just over $64,000 at today's rate of exchange, Mantex, is their no-holds-barred approach to digital-to-analog conversion. For those who would like a deeper dive into the company, please take a look at my written report on this launch, which will be published in Enjoy the Music. A link to that work will appear in today's description section. The Mantex weighs 37.5 pounds, is 17.5 inches wide, stands 4 and 7 8 inches tall, and is 16.5 inches deep, while its Electra power supply weighs 48 and a half pounds and stands six and a quarter inches wide by 17 and a half inches tall and 16 and seven eighths inches deep. With its elegant centrally positioned three inch round display, the uniquely shaped chassis of the Mantex supports SPDIF, AES-EBU, Toslink, I-squared-S, 
and USB inputs, and one each RCA and XLR analog output, and it will play audio files of all types, including PCM from 16 to 32-bit at 44.1 to 384 kHz, and native DSD up to DSD 512 over USB. However, its SPDIF and AES EBU inputs will support up to DSD-128, and the Toslink input only supports DSD over DOP up to DSD-64. It employs two different world-class converter chipsets, both the AKM AK4499EX and the ESS ES9039M Pro, and offers both tubed and solid-state output. Its beautifully machined aluminum 28-button remote allows for the full manipulation of the Mantex options and settings, and given all the possible options and filters, the Mantex offers 24 different sonic output profile combinations. Talk about versatility. The full system used for this launch included the Callista Dreamplay X SACD CD transport and streamer, which fed the Callista Mantax DAC via a 1.5 meter AudioQuest Dragon HDMI I2S digital cable. Both machines were supported on the bespoke tripod stand from Artisania. The Mantex used a 2 meter set of Nordost Odin 2 XLR interconnects in combination with its native volume control to connect to a T plus A PA3100 HV stereo amplifier, which in turn drove a pair of Piaget Coax 411 monitor loudspeakers using a 4 meter set of Nordost Odin 2 speaker cables and a 4 piece set of Nordost reference bi-wiring jumpers. The Piaget set atop a pair of Dynaco Stand 20 speaker stands and were anchored to the stands using Sikoman anti-spike speaker feet. Finally, components were isolated using Nordost sort cone TC cones. An audio plan PowerStar S4 with a 3 meter ampere L power cord was used as the AC mains distribution system, and other AC cables included 1.5 meter audio plan ampere L power cords. Nordost QK1 and QV2 load resonating coils were used to scrub and condition the AC power. Now, all pricing for these system components is included in today's description section. Now let's listen to the conversation I had with Jean-Marie Clozel before the event and some recordings of the setup. Hello everyone. Today we are in downtown Vienna at the uh, Adagio Vienna City. We are here for the launch of a brand new flagship product from Callista. This is the owner and designer of the new Mantax stack that we're here to see. Um, this thing's really versatile, what I've read about it. I'm about to hear it, and you're going to hear it too. But you've done so much with this. Um, two different DACs, tubes, solid state. The options seem endless. Do you want to talk about what all it's set to do for us? Yeah, of course. So thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Mantax launch. Uh, yeah, the idea with the Mantax, which is a top-of-the-range DAC, was to provide something, was to provide a, a, as much versatile experience as possible to the, uh, to the listener, to the end customer. And of course, this goes along with the Dreamplay X transport, yes? Yeah, it, it fits perfectly with yes. the Dreamplay X because we, we made all settings with the two products, but of course you can use Mantax with any other sources. Sure. Streamers or other uh, CD or SACD transports. Now this transport will play pretty much anything optically. CD, SACD. CD, SACD. Uh, it's a network player, also okay. integrated. Okay. Good. So it's really versatile. Dreamplay X is uh, two or three functions in one. In, in we also have an integrated version. Dreamplay X in its uh, XC version is a four in one actually. So it's a CD and SACD player streamer, digital volume control, and DAC, of course. But this version is Dreamplay X, which is only, let's say only in two brackets, only <laughs> CD and SACD transport and streamer. And streamer. Now, this is, the, this is a stand that's made for the pieces together, yes? Absolutely. It's very attractive, and we'll get some pictures and some close-ups here in a bit. Um, so do you want to tell people what, what gave you the idea to do solid-state valve 
and two different DACs. You're using the AKM 4499 and the ESS 9039 Pro, M Pro. That's two very good DACs. I'm very familiar with the 4499, but what made you go that direction? What's the goal here? Yeah, first of all, we always, well, at least there's a very long time that we try to provide different uh, sound profiles to the customer. This is what we did for many years with the uh, solid state and tube output that you, you can switch from one to another without uh, stopping listening. Okay. And uh, when we thought about the, the, the man tax, uh, we tried to think over something that would provide even more possibilities to the to the listener, according to the type of music, according to his mood of the day. Sure. <laughs> and uh, the point is that we, you know, after the a AKM factory fire, yes, we had to move from AKM to ESS, and we were very happy. But we've been AKM user for many many years. So the idea was uh, with my engineers to try to provide the experience of ESS and the experience of AKM. And uh, first of all, they said it's impossible. <laughs> you told me this <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, and finally it was. Possible. After about 10 days, you got them to think about it. And yeah, yeah. And I think it's quite unique. Absolutely. Uh, the yeah. solid state and tube is also very unique. Yeah. Uh, no one copy us until now. Uh, on that point, and and the double line of DAC also is, is something that that, that is uh, pretty unique. And until now, few people already have tested uh, Mantax, and are very very happy with this 24 different uh, sound profiles possible, uh, solid state and tube, the two DAC lines, and every DAC has six different filters. So that makes, if I calculate well, it makes uh, 24. 24 options, yeah. Now, this will do everything from 1644 to, what is it, 32, 390? How far? Until, uh, uh, up to DSD. Well, but in PCM, it does. PCM up to 384. 384, yeah. And DSD up to 512, quad DSD. Um, there is nothing native above that. I mean, there are people pushing eight, you know, like eight times DSD, but Nobody's recording with that. It's just no, the no. native play. The native recording mode is four four times. So this is always something. Well, yeah, it's another subject. Yes. But, but. Well, listen. I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We have a big launch event coming. Um, how about if we play a couple of tracks for people to listen to? Absolutely. Let's give it a shot. Yeah.
You simply cannot tell from these recordings, but the resultant sound regenerated in that space over my two hours of pre-keynote address listening revealed an unbelievable degree of faithful timbre with vivid tonality, enveloping space, complex texture, and subtle nuance, rife with expressive detail. Even in this remarkably limited context, a setup in a venue that was essentially even less friendly than most show conditions, this system had been assembled and dialed in over the space of just something like two hours. The enveloping tapestry of sound created was surprisingly impressive. No matter the genre of music selected, the pace, rhythm, and timing of the arrangements were all equally well served. There was an infectious sense of correctness to the flow, momentum, and tempo of everything, from jazz masterpieces to rock and roll classics. When it came to the portrayal of instrumental accuracy, the Mantex delivered in spades. Horns were portrayed with their faithful, distinctive blat, combined with a level of creaminess that perfectly served their natural texture and overall fidelity. Piano was rendered so accurately that with the right tracks, you could readily perceive hammer-striking string, more properly communicating the piano's voice as the percussion instrument that it is. Most of my readers and viewers know that I place considerable value on a system's capability to accurately recreate the recording's physical space and to generate precise individual placement and voice sizes of instrumentation throughout the soundstage. Here, staging was not only presented with realistic depth and appropriate width, but was remarkably specific and authentic in its ability to convey instrumental locations and proportions across the entire stage. No small feat. As I would learn in conversations after the keynote address presenting the Mantex, it had been cycled through a good number of the possible filter and playback combinations during the two-hour listening session, which may in part explain why I'd had such difficulty in pinning down any specific attribute or signature sonic characteristic of its playback envelope. What I can say is that the Mantax had turned in a stunning first act. This launch event was an overwhelming success, one that was not only a stirring achievement, but one that has deeply aroused my further interest. The Mantex, as heard with this array of extraordinary associated gear, had proven itself to be an exceptional performer, one that clearly provides a uniquely authentic and engaging voice to digital sources. I cannot express strongly enough my appreciation to Jean-Marie Clozel and his entire team for having been allowed to attend and to share this experience with my audience. Given how taken I was with what I heard from this audition, after further conversations with Jean-Marie and at his suggestions, I reached out to his Canadian representative, Win Wong of Win Audio, whom I've known for some time now. And guess what? Win has agreed to send me the Dreamplay X Transport and the Mantex DAC for a serious evaluation in my reference system here early next year. That should prove to provide a yet another exceptional digital experience here at the Audio Analyst Central. Stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.